You're on. Awesome. All right, we're finally, finally getting started. Woohoo! Okay, so thank you again for being here today. I really appreciate it. Um, hopefully this will provide you with some useful information about not only the Kickstart, but just some general about um, health and wellness. I probably went a little bit overboard on my PowerPoint presentation. So we're just gonna move pretty quickly through it. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll, I'll try to address them. Um, so first, let's start with the Kickstart. My presentation doesn't address that. But the um, Love Your Body Nutrition Kickstart, you know, it's got a little theme going on here. Um, <clears throat> so it's, this Kickstart is, I guess, officially starting today, technically, um, but you are free to kind of hop on board anytime throughout the week next week. Um, we'll be doing intake this coming week, so 15th from the 20th. So essentially what the Kickstart is, and the reason why it's not a challenge, is that the Kickstart is kickstarting and introducing um, our ongoing nutrition program. So we've had a couple of people and a couple of our members specifically ask about whether we offer nutrition coaching and counseling services, and we haven't in the past, and we're going to start doing that now. Um, so it's pretty exciting. We, it's something we haven't done before, something we're really thrilled to kind of take on. And um, our nutrition coaching is gonna be separate, kind of a separate add-on from um, <clears throat> the CrossFit classes. So it's kind of a mix and match kind of thing. If you wanted to, you know, obviously y'all are participating in the, in the coaching and in the classes. Um, well, nutrition can be something that you do separately or, you know, or not, uh, totally up to you. Um, it's going to, we're, we're gonna have coaching that's gonna benefit everyone at every level though. Just like we would have in a CrossFit class uh, where we address people kind of where they are and we offer scaling and uh, <clears throat> progressions and regressions based on their capability for that movement. It's kind of the same thing with our nutritional coaching. Uh, we're gonna offer kind of advice, programming, planning that meets somebody where they're at and progresses them, pushes them into that new zone of health, um, whatever their needs are, whether you know your goal is to gain weight, lose weight, or you're just trying to fine tune your nutrition to make sure that it's kind of on track with what your, the, uh, your other movement goals are. Um, that's all something that, that you're gonna be able to do and to receive through nutritional coaching. Um, so that's kind of the, the story about our ongoing program. The kind of the mechanics or the specifics of the ongoing coaching is something we're still kind of working out. We're still figuring out how, what kind of plans we want to offer and things like that. Um, but essentially, <clears throat> this 30-day Kickstart is just kind of, kind of to introduce people into the idea of what that coaching is going to feel like, what it's going to look like, um, and some of the responsibilities they're going to have. Because obviously this is... <clears throat> just like with our regular CrossFit class, it's, it's going to be challenging. We're, we're not going to be able to help you unless you're really trying to help yourself, right? So, um, and that's especially true with nutrition. Anytime that, <clears throat> you know, you're on your own at home and you're having to make those decisions about what you want to eat, you know, that's, that's kind of your, you know, your responsibility. And so us as coaches, you know, we're here to guide, but we can't, um, you know, it, it's going to be, going to be that 60 40 you know probably 60 percent us 40 percent you or vice versa <laughs> right. hope i put that in the right way um <clears throat> so the kickstart is 30 days <clears throat> it's kind of it's structured like a challenge in the sense that anybody is welcome to join um it includes two one-on-one -on -one nutrition coaching sessions um at the beginning and the end of that 30-day period and in, during that session, that first session, you're going to determine what your goal is, and the coach is going to help you structure a plan that's specific to your goal. Um, so again, very personalized. Not everybody's going to be doing the same thing. Somebody's, some people are going to be dealing with macro goals like <clears throat> trying to adjust their carbohydrates, adjust their protein, gain weight, lose weight, etc. Some people are going to be doing micronutrient goals, or they're just concerned with how many uh, nutrients they're getting and minerals they're getting into their diet and kind of just improving on that, that fine-tuning scale. Um, so the, that coach you meet with will help you structure that goal, and the next 30 days are all about that. Um, during the Kickstart, we're also going to have a Facebook page that's dedicated to the Kickstart, where we're gonna have nutritional tips, um, recipes, kind of support groups, things for people, to, you know, discussions for people to comment on and talk about, and that's gonna be a huge part of the Kickstart. There is going to be a winner of the Kickstart, and that winner is going to be based on <clears throat> excuse me, hmm, qualitative and quantitative assessment. So basically how well they met their personal goal and 
you know, what kind of changes that they made for themselves, and also how involved were they in the Facebook group and in these discussions, etc. So it's qualitative and quantitative, and that winner is going to win, drum roll, da da da. Uh, they're going to win two free coaching sessions. So it'll kind of launch them. I yeah, let's say it'll kind of launch them into that nutritional program. They're also going to get a pot prize, a cash pot prize. That's very exciting. And we have no idea how much that's going to be because it's completely dependent on how many people join the Kickstarter. Right, a portion of your Kickstart fee feeds that pot. Um, <clears throat> so they're going to win that pot prize and cash. And everyone is going to receive the Crosser Vector t-shirt and access to the group, the recipes. There, there will be weekly challenges that are really more kind of for fun and participation, not necessarily, um, you know, how, it not, not quite like the hydration challenge where it's based on benchmark development, right? Did I cover everything? Yes. Okay, good. All right, so moving right along. Um, so our kickstart, we, we want to talk about this, the, the rest of the seminar is going to be a little bit about nutrition and we're going to stick with the basics um, because anytime we design programs for people, that has to be completely individual. Um, you know, Destiny's needs are going to be completely different than Blake's needs and Chris's needs and my needs, right? So the, the coaching process is completely individual, but general health and general wellness related to diet is pretty simple, right? If you think about it. So let me stop my handy dandy slideshow video. Excellent. Okay. Whew, it's going to be hard to see this title, but it says, what is the CrossFit nutrition philosophy? I'm going to read you the first part here. The short answer, and it's written right up there on the wall anytime you want to look at it, eat meat and vegetables, nuts and seeds, some fruit, little starch, and no sugar. Keep intake levels to that which will support exercise, but not body fat. It also discusses that we need to optimize this for ourselves. We need to measure and record our intakes, kind of evaluate our personal performance, and potentially change and fine tune our nutrition based on what we personally need, right? Um, so it also talks about adjusting, again, adjusting that food intake for not only for your goals and discipline, but for your commitment level and your lifestyle. So we're not going to try to launch ourselves into a really complicated diet if that does us and did us, right? It's completely individual. All right. Let's see. All right. So the big question is, do I need to evaluate my diet? The short answer is yes, absolutely. Everyone needs to evaluate their diet. <clears throat> CrossFit is an exercise and nutrition program. It's both. So if we don't address nutrition, we're essentially rowing with one oar in the water, right? We're just kind of moving in circles. <laughs> um, you can't out-exercise a bad diet. And in addition to that, a lot of people know that one, but you also can't, you can't slack on feeding yourself. So if, you're, if your diet is good, but you're still you know, feeling that exhaustion, it's not meeting your needs for the activity level that you're holding in the gym, you need to adjust that diet because you're gonna, you know, be hungry. All right, so to read the full rewards of the CrossFit program, work on regularly and optimize your nutrition. So again, we're fine tuning, making adjustments for what we need. Um, so some of you may have seen this before, it's a pretty common graph in, in fitness and wellness circles, but this is the Sirius Wellness Fitness Continuum. And basically what we're looking at here is, is this is you. This is your continuum of sickness, wellness, fitness. So someone who is type two diabetic and extremely obese, where are they gonna be at? They're gonna be over here. They're gonna be in that sickness area, right? Someone who lives in a very average, maybe slightly active lifestyle and doesn't have any major conditions, they're gonna be right here in the well section, right? Somebody who is living an extremely active lifestyle, they're focused on mobility, strength, cardiovascular fitness, they're eating well, they're gonna be over here in the fitness section. So our whole goal as athletes and as humans is just to make sure that we're hanging out in this area of the continuum. We wanna make sure that we're constantly trying to push that needle towards the fitness side because what happens if we, what happens if we get, for example, COVID-19? That needle is gonna naturally push towards the sick section of this continuum, right? Because our body is fighting off a virus and it's sick. 
Or, you know, another example is, you know, if we have another um, health concern, like autoimmune disorder, something that's genetic, our body is it's going to be trying to push us in this direction towards sick because we're fighting, we're constantly, we're, we're battling that on a regular basis. So it's our job to keep pushing that needle towards fit in any way we can. And the basic measure of health is based on a multitude of indicators, <clears throat> but it's basically blood pressure, body fat, bone density, triglyceride count, HDL and LDL cholesterol levels, flexibility, muscle mass, mobility, resting heart rate, and more. So there's a lot to, that goes into this, and we need to kind of just think about all of them on a regular basis. So nutrition is part of how we push that needle over. Um, and here again, how do we push the needle? Move regularly, just get up and move. Keep your movement varied, that's the whole CrossFit philosophy is constantly varied functional movement at, at uh, relative high intensity, right? Uh, we're working on flexibility and mobility, eating a healthy and balanced diet full of protein, healthy fats, carbohydrates, and fiber. And we wanna think colorful food. So this doesn't necessarily mean like food diet, right? We're just talking about fruits and vegetables, stuff that has a natural color because color tells us that there are nutrients, micronutrients and minerals in that food. Uh, we're we're gonna try to avoid processed food, excess sugar, alcohol, and excessive habits such as frequent tobacco use. Now, I know that's a scary one, but you know, everything moderation, right? That's what we're looking for here. Drinking plenty of water. Also go outside, breathe fresh air, get that sunlight. Supplement, supplement your diet with omega-3s and vitamin Ds if your lifestyle doesn't allow you to do that. So for example, um, you know, not to call anybody out here, but Blake's got a night job, right? He spends a lot of time working during the night, sleeping during the day. He might want to consider a vitamin D supplement just to help him out. You know, it's a perfect example. Uh, just something to kind of, <clears throat> again, keep pushing that needle towards fitness. Um, <clears throat> consider your mental health and your body just need your rest. That's a really big one. Make sure you're taking care of yourself and you're listening to your body. All right. Woo. How are we doing here? Moving quick? Yeah, we're good. All right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about fad diets. There's a lot of stuff going around about multiple types of fad diets. Um, I'm not bringing them up to kind of rail against them, but I'm just pointing out the reason why we don't, as CrossFit Vector and as CrossFit in general, we don't support fad diets. The reasoning behind this is because they're just not for everybody, right? It's not a one size fits all thing. For example, <clears throat> with ketosis or keto diet, um, it has proved successful for a lot of people, especially people who are interested in weight loss. Um, the things you need to know about keto, you are, and, and uh, Chris and I have tried it. I'm, have you tried it, Matt? Yeah. We, we've tried it. It's meticulous. It's extremely meticulous. It might not fit everybody's lifestyle. You're continuously counting macronutrients, making sure you're, you're like weighing your food. You're looking at label. I mean, it takes up a huge amount of time out of your day. The specific macro ratios are actually pretty, pretty unlenient. Um, you have to be within seven to 10% carbohydrates every day. Otherwise you're out of ketosis immediately. So um, this is more suitable and feasible for certain body types. A quick story on this, when Chris and I were doing ketosis, um, he did it, he started it a week before I did. And we tested about when, when he was two weeks in and I was a week in. I was in high levels of ketosis. He was in low levels. What reason? We don't know. We were eating the exact same things. For some reason, my body took to it. His didn't so much. So it's not quite for everybody, right? Uh, ketosis is also a starvation response. It's not something that we want to do long term. It's something we want to do in cycles uh, because it is the process that the body uses when it's starving. Um, all right, juicing. Juicing is a really popular one right now, uh, especially again for weight loss. Um, the main thing we know about juicing is that results are often temporary and kind of limited to that starting point, right? Because we're shedding water weight. We're consuming more fluid, so the body is releasing more fluid. Uh, liquids also break down fiber in food so that we're, we're experiencing hunger more frequently because we're not getting the natural fiber that we would get by simply eating an apple instead of breaking it down. The, the body digests and breaks down liquids way quicker than it breaks down solids. Um, so the bottom line here is that extreme diets can cause unexpected malfunctions. Um, you don't always know how a very specific kind of restriction type of diet is going to affect your body, and it may not always be good. Can be good, may not. Moving along from that, ah, vegan and vegetarianism. 
So this is, whoop, can't put my jacket on. It's getting cold in here. So this is a really popular one, especially because a certain documentary came out a little while ago, um, which if you catch me at another time and ask me about it, I will get on my soapbox about the people who funded that documentary. But anyway, uh, so vegan vegetarianism is sustainable. However, it can only be done through proper planning and food tracking to ensure protein intake. Um, it can result in initial health benefits due to weight loss and an increase in micronutrients. So basically, if you're coming from a standard Western diet and then you hop on a vegetarian train, you're going to see initial benefits, absolutely, because you, you switch from eating a burger and french fries and now you're eating all those fresh veggies, right? So that's obviously we're going to see some health benefits there. Um, the main thing we need to know is that studies do show that animal-based protein is preferred by the body. It's kind of just one of those things. The body likes those animal-based proteins, and that's because they're complete proteins. With vegetables, we're often having, we're, we're, the vegetables lack one or more essential amino acids, so it's important to mix and match. So if you're gonna get enough protein in your diet, you have to be constantly seeking different types of vegetables and mixing and matching them throughout your day to make sure you're getting all those uh, complete aminos. Um, also here, just a quick note on vegetarianism or veganism, your iron intake has to be doubled to compensate for the lack of iron that you're getting from your meat. So that's an important thing to do. So it is sustainable, it's just challenging, and it's not for everybody. All right, moving right along. So we're gonna talk a little bit about macros, this is my favorite. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about the two main theories about <clears throat> weight loss and weight gain. And that is calories in and calories out versus glycemic index reduction. So calories in, calories out is basically the idea that if I eat less, I'm going to lose weight. Yes and no. Uh, and it's the same thing with gain, you know, it, it, where it, you guys might have heard of dirty bulking, where we have like power lifters that are just eating everything and anything they can just to gain mass. Well, the interesting thing here is that different types of macros create different types of responses in the body. So really, when we're talking about losing weight specifically, glycemic index is really what we want to pay attention to. Um, fat consumed does not become fat. That's, of course, a big myth. And especially if you had a mom like me who was a baby boomer, boomer and she bought onto that Ansel Adams train where she was like, if you eat fat, you'll get fat. I'm like, nah, not exactly, mom. But uh, the insulin roller, roller coaster, is what creates fat storage, essentially. This is the easiest way to gain fat is by constantly shooting up our insulin level. And how do we do that? Uh, so I have a nice little quote here. Insulin stimulates fatty acid synthesis and adipose tissue, et cetera, et cetera. Um, how, do we, how do we gain the fat? What, what happens is, and I've got a nice slide coming up that shows the insulin roller coaster, um, but the bottom line we need to know before we get into that is there is no evil macro, right? Fat's not evil. Carbs are not evil. They're just different types of macros that affect our body in different ways and we need we need all of them we need our fats and proteins for survival we cannot survive without those two but we need our carbohydrates for quick energy if we stop eating carbohydrates we're not going to die we're going to feel real tired right it's real tired so let's look at that insulin roller coaster real quick just so we kind of get a good idea of what that's like here's my roller coaster all right so the first thing that happens on your insulin roller coaster is we've got normal blood sugar levels we're just cruising through the day, normal blood sugar levels, everything's going good. Then we eat something that's pretty high glycemic index. And when I say high glycemic index, I'm talking about your starchy carbohydrates, large quantity of starchy carbohydrates, or uh, maybe something really high glycemic index like a cupcake, something like that. Uh, again, it's not evil, it's just really high in sugar, and this is what happens. So when you eat that cupcake, or your potato, your body says, wow, I've got way too much blood sugar right now. I need to do something about this. So it releases insulin. And what the insulin does is it packages up all of that extra blood sugar into a complex lip lipid molecule. And it says, I'm gonna, instead of using this right now, I'm gonna store it for later, because I might need it. I might be going on a really cold run <laughs> in the morning, <laughs> and I might need some of that. So it, package, yeah. it packages it up, it sends it into the body, it, at the adipose tissue, and then your blood sugar returns to normal. So this is fine, this is what the body is supposed to do, right? It's a normal, natural response. The only problem is, is when we're continually hitting the high points of that roller coaster, so we're, you know, our blood sugar's down, we're eating something really high glycemic index, it's going up, then it 
insulin's released, we're going back down, then we eat something else, it's going back up. So we're constantly yo-yoing through that roller coaster, and the body is not only experiencing increase in adipose tissue, that fat gain, but now it's also increasing insulin inflammation. So we've got this constant state of high insulin. That's what leads to our type 2 diabetes, uh, insulin resistance, metabolic disorder, all that terrible stuff that we don't want to happen. So that's the basics on insulin. So the idea here is we just want, we not only want to watch the calories that we're eating, we kind of want to pay attention to the quality of those calories. How high is the glycemic index in these foods? And just be aware of what we're eating. It's not evil, it really isn't. It's just we need to be more aware of how often are we stimulating that insulin and with what. All right, so micronutrients. Yes, 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 all right. So micronutrients just refers to the things that normal people call nutrients, right? It's talking about our iron, vitamin D, vitamin C, all those great things that we need. Um, nutrients come from fruits, vegetables, and yes, meat. That's, that's kind of a, something that people don't always remember is yes, you can get minerals from meat. It's awesome. Um, so basically, what's going on in America right now is that, I guess I did some poses here, but together with physical inactivity, eating an energy rich, so high calorie, high glycemic index, nutrient poor diet disposes one to many chronic diseases, including type 2 diabetes, mellitus, cardiovascular disease, cancer, and osteoporosis. It's our good friend there. Um, so if we if we have a deficiency in micronutrients, we can experience fatigue, difficulty to fight infections, uh, cognitive function, or impaired cognitive function, difficulty with memory, long-term health risk, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, they're extremely important. So we're gonna talk about some of the common nutrient inadequacies. I'm not gonna go over this whole thing, but essentially here, I've got a little chart that shows some of the main inadequacies that people experience what that leads to, and where to find them. So as you can see, there's quite a few that are listed on the list of, uh, in America, micronutrients that people are commonly deficient in. And you'd be surprised how, it would, I think the statistic was 22% of Americans experience micronutrient deficiencies. Uh, so this can lead to all sorts of things, uh, immune and reproductive issues, osteoporosis, oxygen saturation and hormone issues, anemia, I mean the list is kind of endless, thyroid dysfunction, um, and as you can see, the list of where you can find these nutrients is pretty big too, which is great. So we're talking meat, poultry, fish, vegetables, uh, mushrooms, eggs, legumes. There's all sorts of things that you can eat to kind of increase that micronutrient intake. And that's really the basic part of, you know, it's great to take a multivitamin. And if you choose to do that, that's wonderful. Um, but the way I like to look at it is we're trying to fill up a cup, right? So we have, we've got this cup in our body. And it can only, we can only hold a certain number of micronutrients in there each day. So if we're taking a micronutrient, we're gonna probably fill that cup up regularly. If we're eating the foods that we need to eat, and we're getting all this in our system naturally, the cup's already full. So the micronutrient, it might help, it might not, but the main thing is we wanna get, we wanna get our micronutrients from the original source, right? All right, moving on. Guys, tell me if I'm in one. All right, so the one mineral that typically is ex experiencing micronutrient excess is sodium. Um, so, according to this little statistic, 90% of adults surveyed had daily sodium intakes in excess of the UL or the tolerable, tolerable upper, upper level intake. Uh, so, as it says here, in other words, don't be too salty. <laughs> Just watch your sodium intake. That's the one, the one thing we can and ex frequently experience excess in, especially because a lot of our, our foods in America, our Western diet are heavily salted, because it just tastes good, gosh darn it. All right. All right, so I this is- You can't have those fries. You what? You can't have those fries with all that salt on <laughs> Hey, there's nothing wrong, like I said, nothing evil. There's nothing wrong with having fries. It's just, yeah, just, you know, if you're moderation. having fries, maybe don't do it. Just in moderation. Yeah, everything in moderation, it's fine. Um, all right, so healthy habit forming. This is a really big one that I wanted to talk about today, but it's a small slide. Um, so we've gone over some diets before, and the basic bottom line information there is there is no one-size-fits-all diet. I'd love for that to be the case, but there just isn't. 
um, the main thing is just making sure that we're getting enough of those veggies, getting enough of our proteins, um, however we choose to source them, pro uh, animal or, or plant, um, and we're, we're varying up our nutrition, right? So number two is experiment with your diet. Be, be a little bit be a little bit scientific with it. A big part of our um, Love Your Body Nutrition Kickstart is gonna be tracking our diet. We're actually going to require that all of our participants track on either the um, Nutritionix track app or MyFitnessPal or in a hard copy, like a, some kind of journal of some sort. And basically this is for you. It's just about you figuring out what, what are my habits? What are my, my highs and lows that I go through? What are some things that I'm eating a lot of that I didn't know I was eating a lot of, or perhaps not enough of? Um, so it's a really good way, tracking your diet a little bit is a really good way to figure that out. And next is the 80-20 principle. So the 80-20 principle is essentially 80% of the time we wanna eat the things that are great for us, 20% of the time we get to treat ourselves a little bit. Um, so no diet is gonna be sustainable if you hate it, right? Because then you're just looking into the future thinking, man, when is this gonna be over? Like, I can't wait till next month when I don't have to do this anymore. Like, oh, or I can't wait till that wedding when I can stuff my face, you know, and gorge because I've been eating lettuce and kale for the last two weeks or whatever. You know, so the 80-20 principle just teaches us that there, we do have limited willpower and we have to treat ourselves on some level. Even if your treat is still a healthy treat, um, you know, it, it's still something that you need to be able to look forward to and, and have in your diet so that your diet doesn't collapse from lack of willpower. All right, so the next, uh, oh, next, I already addressed my next point. Treat meals can help with willpower and sustainability of a diet. Um, so we've gotta have some kind of treat in there. Even, I, I'm gonna use Chris as an example. Um, he's been working hard to lose some pounds and for his competition. And so last night I had a little pint, like half a pint of ice cream and he ate apples and peanut butter. That was his dessert. <laughs> And <laughs> I'm, I'm so proud of him, but at, you know, at the same time, I'm like that to him, that was what he wanted, that's what he craved, and that's what he ate, you know, and he's still working towards his goal. Not that everybody has to waste their treat meal on apples and peanut butter, that's not what I'm saying. That's good. <laughs> it's just an example. <laughs> but I mean, that could be just one night a week going out and having like your dinner Mexican food and margaritas, um, but just not making that an everyday thing, right? Because that's when we get at risk of uh, being too salty. Anyway, all right, so choose a diet that you can maintain for life. Again, we talked a little bit about this before with the keto diet, the juicing diet, etc. The most successful diets are the ones that we take into the rest of our lives and we don't quit them. And we don't quit them because they're not so bad. They're, they're easy to think about, they're easy to, to, uh, to handle for the long term. It's something we enjoy. Um, it's a new mindset rather than just a, for this, six months, I'm gonna you know, do this keto diet, I'm gonna lose a bunch of weight, and then I'm gonna go back to eating whatever the heck I want, because I'm terribly <laughs> craving these things. Uh, so choose a diet that you can maintain for life, and sometimes that can mean being progressive. You know, We may start a diet thinking, okay, I'm gonna have two treat meals a week, and I'm going to have you know, 50% carbohydrates during the day. You know, and then we progress you know, a couple months later, you're like, you know, I don't think I need two treat meals a week. I think I just need one, or I think I just need 30% carbohydrates from now on. And so you're being progressive. These are, these are things that should happen naturally and um, out of desire, rather than trying to force yourself into a restrictive diet. And the last one is make healthy exchanges. So just like I said with the apples and peanut butter, um, instead of having you know, his ice cream, he had the apples and peanut butter because that's what he chose to do. Little exchanges like that can really help making your diet sustainable. So, you know, instead of having the salty chips that you want, maybe have some like toasted salted nuts. It's a higher micronutrient uh, level. It's a healthier choice depending on which diet you're doing. So you're making those healthy exchanges just to kind of make small, you know, what is that quote? I think if you improve 1% a day, then in 100 days you'll improve 100%. So, you know, just little things like that can really help to make that diet sustainable and long term. And I think that is, that is it. So the next thing I wanted to do is just ask you guys if you had any ideas for healthy snacks that you have done, because I'd love to hear them. I'm sure Matt would love to hear them. And, you know. Yeah. Chris does 
not like that. I'm all about it. I love chocolate hummus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right. Fruit and chocolate hummus. Cool. I like that one. What kind of fruit? Like? I usually do a mix. Like, I get strawberries and raspberries. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I got that. Really I got my protein pudding. Protein pudding. Yeah, it's a cup. It's a I'm cup. Of, it's, a, it's a cup of almond milk and then one scoop of casein protein. And if you shake it, it gets it thickens up, and then you put it in the freezer, and it's almost like ice cream. It's like and it tastes like chocolate, like almond ch chocolate almond ice cream. Mm -hmm. Basically, you're shaking your freezer. You don't like chocolate? You can get the vanilla. I don't really like vanilla protein. Though. I've never. I can't do this. My partner is a person who can't do vanilla protein. Oh yeah. <laughs> Texture, yes, yeah, yeah, like a lot, yeah, yeah. It's, it's that's why I, I don't have to eat ice cream anymore. <laughs> right. It's like it, it's a good supplement for ice cream, yeah. yeah. And I eat it every night, like it's like, yes, I get to eat this every night now. I just grab a handful of carrots, carrots, yeah, I, carrots. I used to look, uh, I like raw carrots, yeah, almonds, and almonds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That might be excessive. And, and I like almonds. Yeah, it's a lot of fat right there. Yeah, anybody, anybody trying to lose weight, man. Right? Cal the calorie guy. Watch those chunky paws. Yeah, like a handful of, you know, a day is probably good. Yeah, yeah one, one thing, it's not a healthy snack idea, but you know, like a little bit of chocolate and almonds. Yeah, one, one thing, it's not a healthy snack idea, but that I've noticed, if you start eating really clean, I have a problem where I don't eat enough salt. Yeah. Because my sodium intake is too low because uh, I don't. Like there's nothing I eat has salt in it, right? Yeah. And so it becomes like I had to start adding salt back into my diet. Yeah, yeah that was one of the tips on the hydration challenge was that um, a lot of people, especially people who are sweaty salters, actually have to add more salt into their diet. But yeah, yeah, and I definitely sweat a lot of salt because it's. I know. I like to uh, slice tomatoes into wedges and put lemon juice on them. Ooh! Oh my gosh, that's that a good idea. Pretty, that one's pretty good. And if you like salt, you can put a little bit of salt on this. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but don't be too salty. <laughs> or tomatoes with uh, um, cheese, mozzarella. Ooh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's good. Oil. Yeah. Back out of hunger now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, I eat a lot of hummus, but yeah, I eat a lot of hummus, but yeah, I eat a lot of mushrooms. I did not like them when I was a kid, but now I love mushrooms. Maybe I'm not getting enough vitamin D. Is that what it was? I don't know. Anyway, ye